Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa in the Guidewell Insights Lounge here at Singularity University's Exponential Medicine 2017. And right now I'd like to welcome to the lounge Rasu Strisa. He is the Chief Innovation Officer for UPMC. So welcome, Rasu. Thank you. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me here. So I understand you're closing this conference down. Yeah, I'm um, the closer. You're the closer. <laughs> and what you're going to be speaking about is innovation at scale. That's so correct. basically yeah. I'm hoping you're going to make sense of every single exponential technology we've talked, I've heard for the four, four days before for you yeah. and bring it all together and lay down some Absolutely. immutable truths about innovating at scale. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to going on the stage and essentially condensing what will be you know, four days of this tremendous discussion so not just incremental innovation, but exponential innovation, right? Not just taking things up a notch or two, but 10x or more is what we're, we're all striving for. And that's exactly what we need in healthcare in the United States and globally as well. So that's what I'm going to be talking about is how do we really innovate at scale? How do we make an impact to make sure that we're able to make a difference in the life of that human being that's at the other side of that screen, that's the other side of that app, or the other side of that business plan? So what are you going to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> so I. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to really soak it all in first, right? <laughs> yeah. But I think what I'm really going to talk about is how do we do this? Because there's a method to the madness, all right? Um, we all know that there's this imperative for us to innovate, right? It's a strategic imperative, whether we're an entrepreneur, we're part of a startup, or we're part of a larger organization like, like I belong to. Innovation is a strategic imperative. but. We can't just innovate for the sake of innovating. There's a method to the madness. So I want to talk about what that method really is. What are some of those tried and tested methodologies that have worked in the past? And I've got lots of arrows in my back and I've got scar tissue that really have formed over you know, multiple successes and failures that we've had as an organization and through multiple iterations of this innovation process. So I'll talk about what works and how we can scale innovation. Okay. And now what have you learned? Because I know that you've been around for quite a while and you go, Everywhere, and you're looking at different startups to invest in. You're looking at, you know, how to bring things back into your organization, which is a tremendous health system. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. So, when you think about, I guess, bringing those innovations back, what are some of the things that are on your mind, um, where it's like, okay, this ticks all the boxes yeah. for integrating and smoothly? Yeah. So, um, you know, we're we're a large healthcare organization. Um, UPMC is, you know, eighty thousand employees. You know, it's a sixteen billion dollar. Uh, peer provider organization with you know, over 40 hospitals, over 6,000 physicians. But we also have this yang to the ying, which is really the payer arm, right? So with about 3.5 million members, um, what we're able to do with this yin and yang of the payer provider really is to look at not just the traditional definition of healthcare, which really has been managing illness and getting better from a sickness, right? which is important and we do that really well yeah. and we're pushing the boundaries of that through science and medicine and technology but what we're also focused on is how do we really move the equation to um, you know, getting the patient out of the hospital and keeping the patient out of the hospital okay. as well. Right? So wellness becomes a really important part of what we're really striving for. And if you look overall at this yin and yang, what we've been focusing on for the last you know, not just a couple of decades that we've been rolling out technology, but really for centuries as, as an industry in healthcare, is um, we've been throwing money and technology and science after um, curing illnesses. Mm -hmm. And regardless of how much money you throw at this, it's cost acceleration. Yeah. Regardless of how well you do it, how well you innovate, it's still cost acceleration. When you focus at the, the yin and yang, right, the entirety of it all, getting the patient better, but keeping them out of the hospital, when you focus on wellness, it's actually cost deceleration. So those are the types of innovations that we're really pushing for in my organization and beyond. And I think what you guys do bring to the table is this unique perspective of having both sides of it. Correct. So both the yeah. care delivery side and the financing of care Correct. side yep. to the table. And I think on that financing of care side, it is difficult to innovate there, but that's really literally where the buck stops, yes. right? Yeah, absolutely. So what's your advice, I suppose, like? For, for the other payers that might be out there, and you know, full disclosure, Guidewell does have a, sure. a payer underneath that it, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield of Florida, which mm -hmm. is known as Florida Blue there. Yeah. Um, how can a payer be innovative? Yeah, so I think it's really important for payers to take on a much stronger role than they're, they're taking on right now, but not by themselves. So I'm from Pittsburgh, and I love to talk about building bridges. Mm -hmm. We're the city of bridges, right? We have the most number of bridges uh, across any city globally. 
Uh, I believe in healthcare, and I'll talk about this in my closing keynote as well, we need to build more bridges. Whether it's bridging the payer to the provider, whether it's bridging the old world to the new world, old world meaning the definition of healthcare as we've, as we've known it to, the definition of healthcare as we need for it to be, it's really about bridging these gaps. So from a payer perspective, um, you know, claims data is there, right? And as a clinician, you know, we sometimes shun claims data. But claims data is really valuable, and it's extra valuable if it's um, actually coalesced with clinical data, right? So payers need to come together with providers, They're well beyond sort of the the, uh, the, uh, the accountable care organizations that we see sure. right now, you know, developing tighter integration points, but then really looking at the spectrum of, as an example, if I prescribe in my hospital a medication to a certain patient, right? What I'd like to understand is not just what medication was prescribed, but was that medication actually filled? Now that's information I can get from the claims side, right. right? So if I can then marry the clinical data with the claims data, what I have is a broader awareness of the entire spectrum Right, the continuum of care for that patient. So even if that patient is doctor shopping, going from ED to ED, and you know we're talking about the opioid crisis right now mm -hmm. across the industry, right. we'd be able to have a much clearer picture of whether this patient is actually coming in with acute le left lower quadrant pain, or he's actually feigning acute just left lower quadrant pain mm -hmm. just to get the next shot. So that's the that's the reality of the innovation imperative that we have in this peer provider realm. Well, it changes industry. the it changes that exchange from transactional to creating value. It absolutely, right? it does. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we look forward to hearing your your presentation, your closing keynote, um, several days from now. Yeah. Um, last question for you. I yeah. just want to know, you know, as you're as you're here at Exponential Medicine, and one of the big themes is convergence. Yeah. What are you most excited to see, you know, as far as either technology or even what you're talking about, some of the more innovative process improvements or yeah. the innovative paradigm shifts in thinking? Yeah. What are you most excited to see converge moving forward? You know, what I'm really most excited. I mean, clearly there's lots of great cool technologies that are. You Know, maturing, right? it's technologies whose time has come, right? artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, those are all really, really interesting, but what I'm really most excited about is what I'm most passionate about, which really is culture. Right? When you talk about convergence, it's really bringing all of these technological capabilities together to meet the specific needs around transforming the very definition of what healthcare is all about. And you do that by uh, making sure that you get culture right, that you're, you, so that you're able to, for example, leverage principles of design thinking sure. and bring clinicians and patients um, right at the very start, right? Start with empathy, right? Have them involved in the, in the very process of even ideating, you know, forget about um, getting them involved when you're starting to write code or... Or it's like, here, we're rolling this out, good luck to you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Having them involved even before a single line of code is written, having them involved in the ideation process sure. itself, that's where culture really starts. So getting culture right is very, very important for any organization across the world. Fantastic. Well, Rossi, thank you so much for joining us here. Thank it's you. been a pleasure to hear your perspective, and best of luck with your closing keynote. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. much. Yeah. I'm Jessica DeMassa here at the Guidewell Insights Lounge. 